Hey everyone, I got quite a bit to talk about here with the upcoming AMD Z2 Extreme chips coming in early 2025. So there's a handful of articles out now and there was an IFA conference in Berlin. Uh, for those that don't know, this is like a tech expo kind of conference. They claim it's the biggest one in the world. Uh, I've obviously never been, but there you go. Anyway, within that, there was the Z2 Extreme being worked on, announced by AMD, and it was a joint Q&A session as per this Digital Trends article, uh, attended by themselves, Microsoft, AMD, and presumably other tech media and partners, things like that. AMD's Jack Huon, uh, I probably butchered that, I apologize, had highlighted that with this next generation of chips, with the Z2 Extreme specifically, that they wanted to be able to play Black Myth Wukong specifically at three hours and not 45 minutes like you do get on the current chips. Now, AI did seem to be a focus and there was potential integration with FSR if they were talking about basically kind of enabling and utilizing FSR frame gen upscaling and that would help with their next gen chips. Hopefully there might be improvements with the technology because kind of famously right now, DLSS is quite a bit better with its machine learning enhanced uh, upscaling technologies. AMD does typically suffer in things like hair and foliage and conveniently they have Ghost of Tsushima here showing in the article. Beyond that though, they did have like, as I said, Microsoft was in attendance there and AMD obviously because they were kind of hosting the little Q&A session there. Not much else was kind of announced. They talked about the Nitro Blaze 7 which also has the 8000 series chip, not the AI 300 chips coming out. With the Z2 Extreme, there was no performance talks or anything like that. Uh, the performance will be kind of like early next year. We will get more info on that. For my thoughts on this, likely, you know, we're not going to be seeing Steam Deck kind of level battery, I don't think. It's kind of a... I don't know, an optimistic dream in my opinion to hope to be able to increase from 45 minutes of battery life to three hours in just one generation of chips. Uh, I just don't really see that happening. Uh, you know, maybe there's room to get like two hours or something cool, you know. I, I just don't see going full tilt performance getting three hours on these chips and these handhelds. And if you do want that, you're going to have to have something like the ROG Ally X or something maybe with like a 60 watt hour plus battery in it with the efficiencies of the next gen chips. Now, just as a quick note, this could also be a plus for the Linux side of things as well, battery wise. Uh, obviously it doesn't have the windows bloat and everything so having more efficient chips and a smaller nanometer process I believe these ones are going to be 4 nanometer uh, but having those improvements there nonetheless on the Linux side of things you might be getting quite a bit of performance boost on that side for battery life now Microsoft again was in attendance Hopefully there was talks of handhelds, obviously I'm sure there was, but hopefully there was more uh, deeper talks of that, of potential further integrations with Microsoft Windows and handhelds, whether they're working on their own kind of Xbox Microsoft handheld, or if they were there with partners like Lenovo or Asus and Acer and MSI, just trying to potentially maybe work towards better efficiencies for compact gaming. They do have their compact modes for Xbox app and the Xbox game bar now. They do have a compact mode, which is quite nice. However, the Windows is still Windows and it's not very handheld kind of touch interface game controller friendly. Uh, on devices like the Lenovo Legion Go, it is a little bit easier to kind of navigate because of the bigger screen, but even still, it's a bit of a bear sometimes you would assume the kind of existing partners would continue on with using the Z2 Extreme chip if the Z1 Extreme chip was already in their existing devices. Now Acer has no attachment to the Z Extreme chips because again they're using the 8000 Siri Ryzen AMD chips. Whether they continue to go forth with that or do eventually switch over to the Z2 Extreme or something to keep costs down if they are looking to go that route, potentially. 
The Z1 and Z1 Extreme chips are both based on the Phoenix Silicon, and we're looking at the videocards.com article now. So of course they feature up to 8 Zen 4 cores and 12 RDNA 3 compute units, but the next generation chips are supposed to have RDNA 3.5 with up to 16 cores for the GPU compute units. So this is obviously going to bring a boost to gaming, but you know, like, like I said, with the battery efficiencies and battery gains that they're hoping to get from 45 minutes to three hours, I think that's a little bit of a pipe dream. Uh, you know, going from the Z2 Extreme and the AI300 series, the differences here are the AI cores that ho should hopefully keep costs down for going with the Z Extreme based handhelds as opposed to to an AI 300 series. Hopefully, again in the future, I wish for AMD to hopefully step up their FSR game with their upscaling and frame gen tech and start utilizing these AI and NPU cores in some fashion in their APUs and their GPUs to compete with DLSS. Assuming partners continue to use these chips, I don't know what there would be any incentive to switching over to the 7000, 8000 or AI 300 series. Previously, the advantages were to go with the 7000 or 8000 series chips because you would get better driver support from AMD because they are the OEM drivers. You don't have to sideload the 780M drivers like you do on the Z1 Extreme chips currently. However, there was talks, and this was quoted in the Digital Trends article again that they were saying that potentially that these drivers would not be handled by the OEMs anymore they would be handled by AMD it wouldn't be reliant on Asus and Lenovo to put out their updated GPU drivers for the Z1 Extreme chips it would just be back under the AMD umbrella as its own SKU with its own set of drivers so that would be awesome because then you would get day one support for everything like you would on the 7000, 8000 AI 300 series chips. If you're waiting for the day one patches for Black Ops 6 or like Black Myth Wukong, how technically in Lenovo drivers still don't really support that or any of the recent releases, you are typically forced with side loading the drivers on the Legion Go, unfortunately. This was claimed by the Windows Central article that we can see on screen here. I, again, I really do hope that this is true and I hope that AMD kind of sticks to it. I really don't see why they why they didn't do it in the first place. It doesn't really make sense to me. I, I get that it was kind of like a new venture and it was a quote unquote special chip made just for handhelds, but really it was just the same chip with the AI cores deactivated. However, I don't know why they wouldn't have just taken control of the drivers in the first place. Potentially, maybe, I don't know if they could kind of retroactively do it with the Z1 Extreme chips as well and rein those back in under their umbrella. So it did go on to say that their sources say that, you know, they previously indicated that Lenovo was working on two new devices, one based on Strix Point and one based on Hawk Point. The Hawk Point would be the quote unquote Legion S device that has been kind of rumored around. Uh, Legion S, Legion Lite, whatever. It's supposed to be a smaller, more compact device. I think at one point it was rumored that you're gonna get a Z1 non-extreme chip in it. But if they're holding off for next year, or next year's chips or whatever, that would maybe make sense if they do plan on having a smaller and bigger or less powerful and more powerful device as it were. Either way, I don't know. Uh, Again, I think the biggest kind of takeaway here is that they do acknowledge that the battery life isn't the greatest on these chips and that Steam Deck obviously still is the champ in that department. However, there is rumors that Valve is working on Steam Deck 2 and we could potentially see rumors of that at the tail end of next year into early 2026. As well, it is also heavily rumored that Nintendo is going to be announcing the Switch 2 in some fashion this month or very early next next month with a release date of Q1 next year. It's going to be an arms race for handhelds next year. That's guaranteed. You're going to have the Nintendo Switch. You're going to have the Z2 Extreme chips. You're going to have talks of the Steam Deck 2 coming out. So you know what? <sighs> Honestly, now it, it, better time than ever to get into handheld gaming and it's going to be even better next year. So let me know what you guys think. That'll do it for this one. As always, you can chat with us in the Handhelds United Discord, and I hope you all have a great day.